We begin with the latest in the Middle East. President Joe Biden is to speak with the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu later today. And that's as Israel faces global condemnation for what, what it calls a mistaken airstrike that killed seven aid workers in Gaza. The United Nations has suspended overnight aid operations in the Strip for at least 48 hours to evaluate security in the wake of the attack on Monday. The head of the charity that the victims had worked for has accused Israel of deliberately targeting his staff. Israel's economy minister, Nir Barkat, says it's nonsense to suggest that the IDF deliberately targeted aid workers, describing the incident as a tragic mistake. Sean Dilley reports. John Chapman, James Henderson and James Kirby, the three British men among seven aid workers killed by Israeli airstrikes earlier this week. They were working for an aid charity, their humanitarian mission, to distribute food. But what I know is that we were targeted deliberately, non-stop, until everybody was dead in this convoy. The humanitarians and civilians should never be paying the consequences of war. This is a basic principle of humanity. At the, at the time, this looks like it's not a war against terrorism anymore. Seems this is a war against humanity itself. Israel says it will investigate, but it insists the aid workers died as a result of a tragic mistake. There's no way in the world that Israel would target people that come to give people aid. That's nonsense. I'm sorry. Give us a bit of uh, uh, of respect that we, we care about those people. And it's the same people that helped Israel. We will never target people like this. Targeted or otherwise, their deaths are among thousands. International concern is growing, even among Israel's closest allies. It doesn't really matter how they made the mistake. At the end of the day, you have seven dead aid workers who are there trying to deliver humanitarian assistance. In non-diplomatic speak, America is losing patience. Other allies, including the UK, are also applying pressure on Israel, responding to concerns about a growing humanitarian crisis. Of course, the extra aid won't work unless there is proper deconfliction, unless aid can be taken around Gaza and we avoid the dreadful incidents like we see, we've seen in the last couple of days. That is vital and Britain will be watching very closely to make sure that that happens. And 600 prominent lawyers, including three retired Supreme Court judges, say they're watching how the UK government reacts. In a strongly worded letter to ministers, they say the UK risks breaking international law if they don't stop providing weapons to Israel. The UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said an independent investigation should take place into the death of aid workers. But he stopped short of agreeing to cross-party calls to suspend UK weapons exports to Israel. Sean Dilley, BBC News. Well, our Middle East correspondent Yolan Nell brought us this update from Jerusalem. Well, we have the Israeli military saying that it's conducting this thorough and transparent investigation. Um, it's also reviewing proceedings and saying that it's looking at setting up a joint situation room where you would have the Israeli military working with international organizations to coordinate the distribution of aid on the ground. I mean, there's still continuing diplomatic fallout from all of this. And we have been hearing um, that the U.S. President Joe Biden is expected to speak for the first time since the killing of these aid workers um, is supposed to speak to the Israeli Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. He's previously said he's outraged and heartbroken by what happened. But what he hasn't shown yet is any willingness really to kind of uh, use more of the US leverage against Israel um, when it comes to its dis dissatisfaction over the conduct of the war, particularly when it comes um, to uh, US military assistance that is given. We had overnight comments that were made um, by uh, the US Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin talking to his Israeli counterpart uh, Yoav Gallant. We're told that he was demanding concrete steps um, to improve the coordination with different foreign aid groups, said that this was all going to complicate efforts um, to, to flood uh, Gaza with aid, which was the commitment that they had had uh, from the Israelis, and also um, made a connection here between Americans' concerns about uh, the idea of uh, 
ground offensive by Israel, a full-scale ground offensive in Rafah in the very south of the Gaza Strip, because uh, the, the U.S. concerns about that have really been on humanitarian grounds because of the numbers of displaced people there. Interestingly, we also heard some comments from an Israeli diplomatic correspondent about Rishi Sunak's conversation uh, with the Israeli Prime Minister, uh, particularly related to the, the deaths of the three um, Britons who were killed in this Israeli airstrike in Gaza. And he was saying, the correspondent said, that if there was no change um, in the, the situation regarding humanitarian aid getting into Gaza, then the UK might have to declare Israel in violation of international international humanitarian law. Uh, that's something that would have uh, real consequences. Um, Downing Street has not wanted to go uh, beyond its initial kind of readout of that conversation between the two prime ministers, uh, hasn't directly commented on what we've heard here in Israel.